present Braden Washburn with the Remax University team. She's going to be telling us all about Master Team Builder Essentials. Take it away, Braden. Awesome. Thank you, Kristen. And thank you, everyone, for taking the time out of your days to be here. I know you all have busy schedules, so I do really, really appreciate it, especially when we are here to learn Master Team Builder Essentials. Like Kristen mentioned, it is a jam-packed session, and it is going to be more of an overview. So any questions you have, yes, save them. We will answer them as best we can. Make sure that chat is set to everyone. I know sometimes it can be um, set to just like the host or anything like that, but we would love for everyone to see your questions as well. So to start us off, my name is Brayden Washburn. I'm a Remax University instructor here out of headquarters in Denver, Colorado. Last time I believe we did um, a session with you guys was my counterpart, Chris, who talked about power of video. So I'm very excited to be here with you guys. Now I did include, this is the QR code as well as the direct link to our Dropbox that houses our resources. So within that, you guys will have my PowerPoint side that we're gonna look at right now. You will have the Master Team Builder Workbook, and that is from our Momentum Complete Agent Development Series. So a lot of great info. I also will be referencing it every so often for tools and resources within that workbook that you guys can go and look at. And then I have included something I created, which is a team business plan and Excel spreadsheet. There are also some instances I will reference that, but that is for you guys to download, save, and use as you see fit for your team. Um, all right, perfect. So like I said, ton of content. Here's what I encourage. Do not get overwhelmed with this, whether you are new thinking about building a team or you already have a team, really just find one to two things throughout this that resonate with you, start there, then utilize these resources, come back and take on the next big thing. Do not be overwhelmed throughout this, but I'm going to get going just to be, um, you know, thoughtful for your guys' time. So going forward on today's agenda, when it comes to the essentials of building a team, we are going to be talking first about perspective, right? Getting in the right mindset of things. We're going to be talking about leading, that's kind of the foundation, as I like to consider that your team can be built upon and can grow from. We're going to talk about planning when it comes to establishing a great team, as well as staffing. All right. First section we're going to go ahead and get into is perspective. Again, getting in the right mindset when it comes to having and growing a team. So there are two basic games in real estate. There's the sales game. And there is the business game. Now, a lot of you guys probably find yourselves more in the sales game. And I'm going to explain a little bit more into that. So when we are talking the sales game, there are three disciplines it revolves around. All right. Looking at this diagram, it's a lot. I'm going to walk you through it. Right. So the first discipline is going to be lead generation. The second is going to be lead conversion. And the third is going to be servicing leads. So these are things that you guys are probably doing every single day, right? These are just basic operations when it comes to real estate, right? Now, if we look at the bottom, we notice these two triangles. We see cash flow and we see maximum input. I'm sorry, maximum output, right? And then we see these words right at each corner of the triangles. Basically, it describes what it takes to achieve these things. Right. These are the two cash flow and max output. These make up the sales game. Right. Now, what's great about this diagram is you can actually use this like as a consultation tool, whether it be for a team member, a different agent, or honestly, whether it be on yourselves, right? Whether it is something you are looking inward at your own business. And how that works is you can ask yourselves these questions, right? Hey, are you lacking consistent cash flow in your business? That is a very valid question to ask yourselves often, right? And if the answer is yes, then you can probably trace that back to one of three things, right? Your commitment, your confidence, or your consistency. And it's the same thing. You can ask the same question when it comes to max output, right? Are you getting the maximum output from your business? If not, why? So what these two triangles represent are in the sales game, you want to have consistency on the front end, we'll see here, and then you want to have efficiency on the back end when it comes to running your business, All right? 
So we see the three disciplines when it comes to that sales game mindset, lead generation, lead conversion, and servicing leads. Now, those three disciplines also apply when it comes to the business game, when it comes to being an entrepreneur. This is the side we want you guys to be on, but becoming an entrepreneur requires six disciplines, which yes, we will get into. And those are the three things we'll be following this section up with. So when we're talking the real estate business game, this looks very familiar, right? This looks almost the exact same as the last diagram. However, what we're adding in here is minimum input, right? We want that consistent cash flow. We want to work efficiently for that maximum output, but by exhausting minimum input, right? We see proficiency, patience, and people. Those are things you need to add to your business, right? To become an entrepreneur. And when we're talking about minimum input to receive a maximum output, that's when the conversation of becoming consistently vital is important, right? Knowing what activities specifically are vital to the success of your business versus what activities may not be, right? So if you, you read what's on the screen here, most teams underperform because they are consistently busy rather than consistently productive. And just being consistently busy, if it doesn't help with your success along the way, that is just in and of itself inefficiency, right? And that is losing time and money. And we know uh, as real estate agents, those are two things we hold very dearly, right? Those are two things we really want to maximize, right? Being consistently vital always should start with you as the team leader and knowing what those activities are going to be for your team. Now, I did include, so in that workbook that um, the resource tab will give you access to on pages eight through 15, they actually have lists of vital activities for the different roles and then how you can determine, you know, which activities for your business specifically are going to help with that consistent cash flow, that max output and the minimum input. So definitely check that out, pages eight through 15. Again, you guys will have this PowerPoint, so you don't have to remember or write it down. You can just come back and look at this here, right? So already saw these three, right? We saw these three disciplines, lead generation, lead conversion, and servicing leads. Those are the same for both sales and entrepreneurship, right? And we consider those operational disciplines. Again, what you guys are doing to operate your business every day. What we're going to add on here, right, when it comes to the business game, is we are going to add leading, planning, and staffing, right, to complete the six disciplines. And those we consider entrepreneurial disciplines, right? So we want you to shift that perspective over and add these three on top. Now, what we're going to cover in the next three sections are exactly this, and I'm going to give you kind of an overview so you guys know what we have ahead of us. So when it comes to leading, we will be talking about creating a mission, your vision, values, beliefs, and expectations for your team. Like I stated, kind of that foundation. We're going to talk about planning. Those are establishing goals. We'll talk about three models, our financial, operational, and organizational model, as well as setting performance standards for you and for your team. And lastly, we will be talking a little bit about staffing. We are going to go over assessing, hiring, developing, rewarding, and retaining staff members coming in. All right, so let's dive right into it. Section two, we are going to be talking about that first of the additional three disciplines. That is the leading discipline. All right, so you must have direction and clarity as the team leader and the visionary, right? You're the one kind of, I love this graphic, you're kind of paving the way right, for your team, right? So you do that by establishing your core ideology. And I like to consider this, that base foundation you are gonna build your team upon, right? And like I stated before, your core ideology, it is gonna be your mission, vision, values, beliefs, and expectations. These are things that once you have established really, really help guide the decisions that you make as a team leader and as a team as a whole. So we're gonna kind of break these down one at a time. So it'll help you guys. If you already have a mission or vision, that's awesome. Maybe it'll make you rethink it, right? Or if you don't have one, we strongly, strongly encourage that this is where you start. This is the base ground you start. So let's talk about the mission, 
right? And that is who you are, right? So your team mission, what it should do is provide purpose and meaning for your team, right? Now, you do not want to confuse your career or your life mission with your team mission. And I will explain in this next slide what I mean by that. So your life mission is to live a successful life, whatever that means to you, right? Maybe it's with your family, whatever a successful life looks like to you, that is your life mission. Your career mission is to produce the time and money that's required to live that successful life, right? We all work for a reason, right? And the, and the career path we chose was real estate, right? So your career is real estate. Real estate in and of itself is a service-based career. So when you are creating your mission, you want to make sure that it is service inspired, right? Always service inspired. Make sure you can differentiate your life, career, and team mission, right? Life mission is to live successfully. Your career mission is to earn successfully, and your team mission should be to serve successfully. Now, when we talk about that, the one thing we really want to consider and ask ourselves is who are you are serving you? and why? right? Who are you serving and why? What is the purpose? So I have given you guys an example. This is not from a real estate team. This is not from any real estate office. This is actually from Southwest. They have really great mission, vision, and values I wanted to show you as an example. So their mission is to connect people to what's important in their lives through friendly, reliable, and low-cost air travel right? So who? People who are traveling, right? And then why? What's the purpose and the meaning? It's to connect them to what's important in their lives. So I think that is a great example. And Southwest is the example I'm going to be using throughout this, just so that you guys know, and we keep that consistency going. But that's our mission. The next one, and for some people, this is the hardest one. This is the one that takes the most time to think through, because again, I call this our North Star, right? So it's our vision what you aspire to be, all right? So your vision should provide inspiration for your team, right? It should move you and others into action, always towards the same goal and in the same direction. So like I said, that North Star, something to always work towards, right? And the questions when you are creating your vision, there are two questions. Number one, who is your target audience? Now, when I say target audience, I am saying, who is your ideal customer? And think big. We might not always get our ideal customer. That is okay. But you still want to create your vision towards that ideal customer. And secondly, how will you serve them? Right? So who is your ideal customer and how are you going to serve them? And just to add on to this, when I talk about your vision being your North Star, right? It should be unattainable. Something you can consistently and constantly work towards should be motivating. Again, like that last graphic, right? Should motivate your entire team in the same direction. Makes a lot of things easier when it comes to that collaboration piece. And lastly, your vision should always be top of mind when you make business decisions. That comes to adding team members on your team, adding staff and administrative positions, marketing, Whatever it is, your vision should help guide you when it comes to making decisions for your team. So Southwest example of their vision is to be the world's most loved, most efficient, and most profitable airline, right? That's filling a lot of shoes they may never hit, but it's something they can constantly, constantly work towards as a team. All right. And next to vision, we have values right? And that's just what you stand for. Values are a little bit easier, right? They determine the approach of your team, right? They can help you establish a positive culture, which we know nowadays having a positive culture is almost hands down the number one thing that people look for, right? They want to work for somewhere that they are happy, right? That has a great culture, great influence behind it. The other thing is if you establish your values, it'll also act as a guideline for behavior, right? In case something happens on the team, hey, you knew what our values were, right? And it, it can sometimes make those tough, tough conversations a little bit easier, right? So I like this. When it comes to writing down your values, you don't have to do it this way that Southwest did it. I just thought it was very, very interesting. They broke their values into me, 
how I show up, we, how we treat each other, and then just Southwest, right? How Southwest succeeds. And I love this. So for me, their values are how I show up with pride, with integrity, and with humility. Your values should just be one word things, right? We, how we treat each other with teamwork, honesty, and service. And then lastly, how Southwest succeeds with, with efficiency, with discipline, and with excellence. So I really, really love this example, but write out those values, right? That's kind of the core of your team and what you guys stand for. All right, and then we get into beliefs. Again, what you believe, simple as that. So your beliefs are gonna determine the attitude of your team. And when you are writing out your beliefs, you wanna ask yourself one question. And this one, sometimes you really have to think about and you already have to have your vision, which sometimes is the last thing uh, people write out because it is the hardest. But to achieve your vision, what must you believe, right? To achieve your vision, to get to that North Star, what must you believe? And another way to put it is your beliefs are your values defined. And I'll show you on the next screen what I mean by that. But again, to achieve your vision, what must you believe? So an example of this, when we are thinking, we look back at the values. And I believe this was the we. There was the me, we, and Southwest. This was the we. And their values were teamwork, honesty, and service. So when we look at their beliefs, right, we believe in being inclusive and embracing team over self. We believe in speaking up and telling the truth. So if you can kind of see what I mean, your beliefs a lot of times are just your values defined, right? This does a great way of defining that teamwork and honesty up there. And then the last thing that's gonna round out kind of you establishing your core ideology are expectations, setting expectations from the beginning. And that is how you behave, right? So your expectations determine the conduct of your team, right? It's that basic roadmap of how you expect your team to behave. Now, what's really important when it comes to expectations in my mind is that you set them from the beginning, right? That way no one is surprised. It also kind of plays into, you know, it makes those tough conversations a little bit easier, right? So for example, hey, I expect you to conduct yourself professionally, right? Especially when it comes to, um, hey, at work, outside of work, right? We are professionals on this team. Or, hey, set the expectation of I am, as your team leader, I'm going to hold you accountable, right? We're going to set these goals. We're going to set these performance standards I'll talk about. And I want you to know I'm going to hold you accountable. The same thing is you can hold me accountable. We as a team are going to hold each other accountable, right? And then through that all, one thing you want to set as an expectation maybe is, hey, and through everything, we are gonna support each other. So again, these are expectations you decide on what you think, but when we think about this core ideology, when we're thinking about our mission, vision, values, sometimes it's a step that, uh, I don't really need to worry about that. I have other things, right? We're, we're worried about money, we're worried about staffing. Do not, I strongly encourage you guys, do not bypass this step. Because again, it will help you so much down the road in making these decisions and helping your team be successful and be together and come with that retention, right? Build a strong team, right? Where you have advocates. All right. So that's going to kind of wrap up our leading, right? And I'm going to leave you with some action items when it comes to this leading discipline. Is number one, create a core ideology you believe in. There is no wrong or right. If it is your team, create a core ideology you would like to build your team around. Regularly review and update your mission, vision, values, beliefs, and expectations. That is one thing you guys can do. You may have a mission now and a vision now, and something changes, right? Your team is growing. Who knows? go in there and it's okay to update those, right? And to review them. And then this is really important is once you have these established, share that core ideology with your team, right? Get everyone's buy-in. We will talk about how this core ideology plays into hiring onto your team. But again, share this, have a poster, right? If you guys have a shared space, whatever it is, remind them ever so often, hey guys, here's our mission and here's the vision we're all bought into. You know, what can we do to get here together? Especially if you guys are going through rough patches.
but awesome. That wraps up section two. We are going to keep moving to section three. So that second discipline that we're adding to become an entrepreneur, and that is the planning discipline. All right. This one is jam packed, a lot of awesome information. So I'm going to do my best um, to get through all of this and answer any questions at the end that may come up throughout this. So if you have questions, please post them in chat throughout this. So when it comes to this planning discipline, there are five responsibilities. The first one are your team goals, right? And that's why your team exists. The second we're going to get into then is once you have your team goals, let's create a financial model, right? Let's determine what our team must do, right? And then we're going to get into our operational model, right? How the team will do it. Our organizational model of who on the team is going to do it. And finally, those performance standards of when the team will do it. Right. So this graph, you know, it says think of it this way. This graph basically shows the flow of these five responsibilities and how they kind of play a part together. Right. So at the top, we have our life aspirations. That's our goals. And then once we determine our goals, right, then we come up with our profit requirement. That's our team mantra. And again, guys, I will dive into these individually after this. Once we have that profit requirement, once we know our team mantra, then we go down into the three different models, our financial model, then our operational and organizational models. From there, um, we come down to those performance standards, right? Each person's responsibilities and what vital activities they need to be doing to accomplish them. So the first one was that team profit requirement or your team profit goal. And that's what we call our team mantra. Right. And put simply, it is it is unacceptable for our team to profit less than what number. Right. That is going to be different for each of you and each person on your team. One thing I do want to keep in mind when it comes to your team mantra is you want to create a goal based on each team member's individual aspirations. OK, now, let me visually kind of put that together for you. So say you have three people on your team right? Your team lead, you have your coordinator, and you have your buyer specialist. What are each of their financial aspirations? What do they need to have that fulfilling or that successful life where they are satisfied? This is my bare minimum. You take each, uh, every person's, right? Whatever their goal is, we combine those. And that is what we create as our team goal. That is our team mantra, right? And we do that because that way there's meaning behind the number, right? And that'll help motivate every person on the team. It's not just, hey, I'm a team leader, right? I think we need to make as a team, you know, let's set a goal of $100,000 in profit. Someone, you know, great, that's awesome. We, you know, we love to see profit, but, you know, what is my motivation behind it? So if you do it this way, each person has a real motivation to hit that goal. Then once you have that, then you create your financial model once you know how much you need to make. So this financial model is something, it is a, a plug and play, I want to say, that will be in that Excel spreadsheet for your um, team business plan I included for you guys, where you will plug in these four things I'm out to cover with you, and then it will automatically do the math for you. So just as a preface, I will explain as we go forward, but the four things that you will need to know to plug in to create your transaction benchmark is number one, your desired profit. Just what we talked about, right? Your entrepreneur's mantra, that team mantra, right? That's the first thing you're gonna need to know. Second is a team budget, your budgeted expenses, and that is on an annual, on a one-year basis. What are those expenses? Third is your average commission rate, right? So you wanna make sure there's consistency across your team. You do not want to feel like someone is favored, right? That can just cause a lot of negative camaraderie throughout your team. So you do want to have consistency in some sense of the word when it comes to the commission rates that your team have when they're doing transactions. So um, again, in your workbook on page 38, they do provide a commission rate guide, like a sample for you guys to look at and to kind of utilize as an example. But again, I strongly encourage that just to make sure everyone feels that they are equal and a part of that team. That's the third thing you need to know. And the fourth thing is going to be your average sales price, right? For the, So just based on the homes in your area or maybe based on maybe your team, maybe you guys sell a little bit more luxury. 
Maybe we're in a market where it's lower. That's okay. You're going to just based on your market and your team members, what's the average sales price? You will plug those four key pieces in all this down here that looks like a lot of math. It could be, but the great thing is you plug those in and it'll automatically do it for you. And what's going to pop out is your transaction benchmark, right? That is how many transactions do we as a team need to accomplish, right? To be able to hit our team mantra, to be able to hit the goals that we set. How many transactions do we need? All right. Then once you have that, once you have your transaction benchmark set in place, we move on to our operational model, right? And this again looks very, very familiar, right? When we were talking about perspectives in the beginning. And these are the operations, again, you guys do on a daily basis. What is important, I'm going to kind of go back and forth between these two slides. What is included in your book as well as here on these slides that we want you to do is create an operational model. And that is kind of finding when we talk about those vital activities, the activities that are actually going to be lucrative, you know, and, and have efficiency behind them when it comes to your team's success. That's what you should be entering here when it comes to an operational model. So to go back for looking, let's take, for example, prospecting, right? There's a huge list of how you can prospect uh, potential leads, right? But at the end of the day, do we want to just one at a time go through every single thing? No, again, that's not efficient. So maybe FISBOs don't work out too well for us, right? That's okay. Maybe we've had awesome luck with open houses and farming, and that is where our team has seen success. That is what we are going to add, right, into our operational model, right? This is something very, very important that you do want to have worked out. Number one, kind of as a guide for your team, right? To be successful, to hit that transaction benchmark, whatever it is. If you guys are shooting for the stars, which I do encourage it, that benchmark might be really high. It might be higher than a lot of you individually, you know, would do when coming together. And that's okay. That's where this is really, really important. Determine those vital activities. And then through that, you can kind of set those responsibilities and goals that you can hold them accountable to, right? We're going to talk organizational model. We'll get into staffing a little bit more in this next section, but there are eight key functions of a thriving team, right? And so eight different responsibilities, ideally as a fully built out team, we would like for you to encompass. Those are broken into two different groups. We have our dollar productive functions as well as our administrative functions. I've also included um, from like our momentum side of things, some titles that you can also give them that I think are just very empowering, right? So for dollar productive functions, we have our listing and buyer specialists, right? And the titles, all of these titles, titles start with director of, which I think is great. So in this case, director of listing, listings and director of buyers. And then below that, the next six, we have our administrative functions, right? So we have that team leader, which could be you, a listing coordinator, closing, marketing and office coordinators and a runner, right? And then those suggested titles on the side as well. So a complete team will fill each of these eight functions to become thriving. And again, we will touch on this a little bit more in that next section. Once you have those all put together, right? We know what our team mantra is. We know our financial benchmark. We know the transactions we need to hit. We know who's gonna be doing it and what they're gonna be doing. Now we wanna set the standard from, for your team members in their specific roles. And these are not to be suggestions. These are Excuse standards. Me. Yeah. So, oh, sorry. I thought you had a question. No, no problem. So for example, when it comes to performance standards, it could be, you know, hey, in your role, for you to be successful and for us as a team to hit our goals, I need you to be making 15 calls a day, right? Or I need you to be meeting with five people a week, two people a week, whatever you set those as being. What's really important when it comes to setting these is we want to create smart goals. And what I mean by that is they need to be specific, right? Clearly defined. They need to be measurable and easily quantifiable, right? 15 calls. They need to be action oriented, right? Something that you do, right? I'm picking up the phone. They need to be realistic. I think that's really important, especially if these are standards. They need to be achievable. That also just helps all together with the mentality of your team. And then they need to be time sensitive. Hey, today or hey, this week or hey, throughout this month. 
right? So sometimes it can be like, hey team, we need to go out there and we need to get 15 transactions this month. That's great, right? But if you can dial it all the way back down and again, in the Excel sheet I'm providing you, it will help you to do this as well of, hey, based on our conversion rates as a team, it looks like we need to call this many people, right? So on and so forth. And here I'm gonna have um, some examples for you right, for listing and the buyer uh, department as well. This is also going to be in your workbook. But just to give examples, when it says dials per talk, right, how many, you know, picking up the phone, right, how many people are we talking to? How many meetings are we setting, right? We see on the buyer side of things, right, meetings per car ride, car rides per offer written. It breaks it down so much more into the activities that you need to do to get those transactions. So performance standards, very important. All right, so section three for the planning discipline, some action items to leave you guys with. Number one is create a team-centered profit goal. Again, include the members on your team. As your team grows out, as you add staff, as you add more administrative positions, go in there, right? Adjust your team mantra, adjust your goal so that everyone feels like they are actually a part of it and they're gonna work a lot harder to hit that goal. Right, create a financial and operational model and make sure you share those with your team. This is something else, right? There's nothing that is ever static when it comes to real estate. So again, go back in. When I give you this Excel sheet, it's something you guys can use to go in and adjust these things, these models, all right? And lastly, and this can be easier said than done, I would say in a lot of cases is hold your team accountable you know, with these measurable standards. Sometimes those hard conversations are holding people accountable from the fear of, I'm going to push them away. Or they're going to have a negative feeling about me. It is normal. And I feel like that is human, but that's kind of from the beginning, setting those expectations of, I'm going to hold you accountable, but here's why, right? If I don't hold you accountable, if I don't care about how you are doing, am I really going to be a successful team leader for you? So again, as we're going through this, there's a lot of moving pieces. But again, just kind of rely on yourselves. You know what to do um, and reach out if you guys need help with anything, but just set those expectations from the beginning. It'll make a lot of things tougher in the long run. I was a manager at a telecommunications company prior um, to joining real estate. And let me tell you, that is a tough role when I have to hold them accountable to selling a product that maybe nobody really wants, right? And it's tough conversations when they don't hit these goals. Even, you know, during COVID, that was really tough. So again, set the expectations from the beginning. All right, and section four, this is our last section we're gonna dive into, and that is staffing. So big question that is asked is, when do you add to the team? Right. And for everyone, this may be different. This this could be different, but we see it as you do not want to add to your team until you have your mission, your vision, your values, your beliefs and expectations, right? your core ideology, and then your goals, financial, operational and organizational models and performance standards set out. So basically everything we just talked about, right, you want to have established in some ways. And, and maybe you already have people on your team and that's great, right? Take a step back before you move forward and really dive in. Hey, if I'm creating this vision, right? Are these, you know, if I'm adding these team members, do they match? I just did a training with a broker owner, for example, and, and we went over, it was the first time we really covered core ideology and creating it for his office. And his takeaway at the end of that was, hey, you know, this is tough, but now that I kind of know what my mission and my vision is, I, I, I no longer think, you know, the person that I have back at home working for me, I don't think they're the right fit for me anymore. And that was a tough realization. But before that happens, take a step back, right? Reassess, work these things out, be patient with yourself, and then move forward. Okay, so there are five staffing responsibilities, right? We have assessing. We have hiring, developing, rewarding, and retaining, right? Retention's a big one, a big one, especially when you take all the time to recruit and bring in um, the staff with these members. So let's first start with assessing, right? And it's kind of having the right idea when it comes to hiring and adding on to your team. 
right? So when you talk about the first one is I, right? Identify the behavioral style that is best suited for each position, right? The behavioral style. I will give you the workbook numbers for these as well. A lot of amazing in-depth when it comes to assessing and hiring. So I will get into that in just a moment. But you wanna identify the behavioral style best suited for each position, right? You wanna define the knowledge, skills, and dispositions required by each position. Right. There's a lot that goes into when you are hiring someone on your team. Um, again, a lot of resources if you need any help with that coming up. And E, right? You want to establish key performance standards for each position. That's what we just talked about, right? Setting those standards right away. It's not just a suggestion, right? These are the standards for the position I would be hiring you onto. So I'd expect you to at least be able to, you know, navigate through those. And then lastly, the A is assemble performance-based job descriptions for each role. Now, like I said, that might seem very like, oh, I don't even know where to begin when it comes to that stuff. And I absolutely understand, I wouldn't either. So again, if you go to the workbook, the Master Team Builder Workbook PDF I provided for you on pages 55 through 86, which is again, I told you it's a lot, it's 30 pages in this workbook that has the roles it has you know those suggested roles we are talking about the job descriptions key competencies for those different roles literally every role has a full page of a potential description that based on what you're looking for you can kind of take what you like from that and put it together when you are looking you guys may already have staff that um you know, again, you have to reassess. So once you've built out these descriptions, go back through and say, hey, is this person in this role, right? Is this the right behavioral style? Do they have the right knowledge, skills, and dispositions required for this? Can and, can and are they hitting my key performance standards, right? And does this job description make sense, right? Is it in tune with this person? If it's not, again, that can be a tough conversation, but you always want to keep your team and your vision at the forefront. Could be hard. It could be somebody you're, you're really close with and you are friends. But again, you want to keep the vision in mind and also your culture. If someone's not a good fit for the role, you know, that in and of itself can bring up problems. Now, when it comes to hiring, we want to hire to your teams what we call the V3 your vision, values, and value. We talked about vision and values already with our core ideology. So you do want to hire to somebody who has that same vision. You guys have the alignment when it comes to this. At their core, they have the same values as you. And then at the end, when we say value, you know, that's what you can offer that is a value to them, right? How can them being a part of your team add value to their business already? And for some of you guys, you may be going after extremely, you know, successful agents. Some of you may see that a lot of new agents now do really rely on coming to a team. There are some brokerages I know who, as a new agent to the industry, you are required to join a team at first, right? To have that additional support, right? That support piece is huge, but higher to your vision, values, and value. If you don't know what those three are, again, take your time, write it out, map it out, and then we start hiring. All right. So talking about who to hire first. First are vital administrative activities, right? And the administrative side of things. That's who you want to add first onto your team. I will have some graphics for you as well around this. The second are vital dollar productive buyer activities. And then thirdly are the vital dollar productive listing activities, right? The buyers and the sellers. So just as an example, right? And this is directly also there from your uh, workbook. So there are different tiers when it comes to an organizational chart. I'm including just two of them in our slides. These are in that workbook as well as in that Excel spreadsheet that I gave um, access to you guys when you download it. One of the tabs at the very bottom, I have uploaded um, all of the tiers in there that would have all those. Remember back when we talked about those eight key functions um, for the dollar productive and the administrative side of things, that's what these tiers are going to break down to. And that final tier is going to open up and it is going to have all eight of those 
um, functions within this graph. But just to start, right, this the tier one will just be you as the lead agent, right? Tier two, which is what we're looking at right now, is lead agent, right, and our transaction coordinator, right? If we look back, the first thing we wanted to add was kind of that administrative side. The second thing we would want to add on to there would be our um, a buyer specialist, right? And then we go from there, then we would add, you know, our listing specialist as well. Again, reference that Excel team business plan Excel sheet if you guys really want to dive in, or maybe you can kind of look and analyze where you are currently and, hey, where do I go next? Even if you're starting bare bottom, you don't even have a team yet. Um, it's a great resource for you to utilize as you do start to add on there. All right. And then when we talk developing, right? So we want to help team members determine, and developing is something you do not want to go by the wayside. As a team leader, you might already be so overwhelmed. Hey, I'm doing all these things that we just talked about and listed. I'm still running my own business. I still have my own clients I'm working with. I'm still helping, you know, my agents with their transactions. You do not want to bypass their development, even if it is crazy. Even if you are so busy and overwhelmed, that is the quickest way, in my opinion, if people do not see growth and development, that they are going to quickly leave, right? So through developing, what you want to do is help team members determine, number one, what to do, right? And you can do that through those job descriptions that we just talked about, set that expectation right away or have that conversation. You want to help them determine, you know, how to do it which could be you creating a training manual for them, right? Or even, yeah, a consultation, right? You want them to know why they are doing what they're doing. That is a big thing. So when it comes to that core ideology, right? Mission, our vision, our values, here's why we're doing it, right? And then when to do it. And that's a big one. And that's that activities management side of things, right? And we do that and we help them develop through those things, through training, accountability, and through team meetings, and this, again, is going to be up to you guys. You will independently run these teams in the way that you find best. Maybe it is, hey, we have weekly team meetings. We're going to all come together and talk about our goals. And maybe it's, hey, I have some amazingly successful members on my team, and I have some who just are not that successful. So I am going to patch you. I'm going to pair you up, right? I'm going to start like a, a mentor program within our team, right? And you can also do that. If you are overwhelmingly busy and you have a team that is grown out and accountability is obviously something we still want to keep at the forefront of our minds, especially when it comes to production, again, that is another way to have maybe a peer mentor, right? Hold each other accountable to it. Get creative. You guys will learn to know your team and what works best for them. So this can be a trial and error thing, but um, obviously, you know, here at REMAX University, we offer a ton of different trainings. We love coming into regions like I am today. So really encourage your team to join these things, right? And keep that development top of mind. Great idea is also creating like maybe a calendar, right? If you know some upcoming trainings are coming around or some great opportunities, depending on one, where your team members are, it doesn't always have to be that you are putting on a training. It can be, hey, you know, what I'm seeing right now and what I think some areas of opportunity are, I have a list of five trainings that I think you can go online on your own time, on demand access, right? And then, and then learn and grow from there. So again, micro develop on the front end so you don't have to micromanage. Nobody likes micromanaging and no one likes being micromanaged. So micro develop, right, on the front end for your team members. When it comes to rewarding, that is compensating team members fairly, right? That is obviously very, very important. So some options when it comes to rewarding um, that you could do, you could do straight salary, right? You could do salary plus profit sharing once your team's a little bit more grown out and you really have that profit coming in, salary plus performance bonus. You could do just commission, draw plus commission. You can mix and match. There's a lot of different ways, um, but make sure you are compensating them fairly. And sometimes that also may be kind of looking, you know, at the market around you and what those positions are, you know, making right now as well. Some other benefits, right? 401k matching, health insurance, disability insurance, continuing education, vacation days, right? I know a lot of people, including myself, entered the real estate world for 
more time with my family, right? So again, whatever you find, and that's through conversations, that's through one-on-ones and consultations, right? What are you working for, right? What, what really matters to you? And then that's something that you can include another thing to add that is value on your team. That can value can be a benefit. Absolutely. All right. And then we have retention. And the biggest thing here is to retain with growth. The easiest way to get people to stay on your team, right, is to be consistently growing, right, to be more productive. That is the easiest way and kind of on the, on the flip end, that is one of the easiest ways to lose people, right, is to not be growing. So some keys to retaining good agents. Number one, find people who buy into your core ideology. That is not as simple as it sounds, right? It will take some conversations. It might take you interviewing and talking to five to six other people to determine, right, who is the best fit, but who actually will become an advocate for this vision I have, right? And who is gonna be by myself help, helping me get there, right? So someone who buys into your mission, vision, values, and beliefs, right? Number two, train them thoroughly on your system. That's another big reason. A lot of people, a lot of people back out and leave, especially if they are coming in from, you know, a different brokerage potentially, right? A different company altogether. There are different systems. So take the time, have an onboarding list for them of here are our systems, Sit down with them, pair them up with a mentor, make that a priority so that they know how to use the systems to be efficient in their business, right? Support their aspirations and growth. This one kind of does sound like a no, no brainer. Of course, I want to support that. But to be honest, again, sometimes that gets pushed to the side when it comes to supporting their aspirations. That is having the conversation of why are you working and why are you doing this? It's as simple as that. Why? And it's not, hey, I want to make, you know, $200,000. It's no, I want to retire early. I want to be able to go on vacations with my kids. I want to pay for their college, whatever it is. It is more than just supporting their real estate business. You want to support their personal aspirations and their personal growth and development. Right. And then hold them accountable to your performance standards. Again, this is tough. Set the expectation right away right? As you are hired on, have these performance standards in your job descriptions. That way it is not a surprise to anyone what you expect them to do. We see that nowadays when we're looking at different jobs, right? We expect you to be able to do this, this, and this. Same thing. And make sure that first conversation that you have is, hey, I want you to know if I am sometimes tougher on you, if we have these hard conversations, it's not coming from a negative place, it is coming from a place of, I want to see you succeed. And I want you then to reach those aspirations that you told me about. And lastly, always, always, always treat them as people of extreme importance. Always treat them as people of extreme importance. All right. So let's talk about uh, the last section here and some action items around the staffing discipline. So Perform an assessment of your team and any positions that need to be filled or replaced. Can be tough, again, for the well-being of your entire team it needs to be done, right? Higher to your vision, values, and value. That V3, keep that in your mind. Higher to your vision, values, and your value. And then, yes, I do love this. I also really loved it. Micro develop so you do not have to micromanage. Take the time on the front. And a lot of people, that's what I hear is I just don't have the time to develop. I don't have the time to train, right? But it's going to take a lot more time if you're helping someone every single step just to try to get them one transaction, right? Micro develop. And then always remember those five keys to retention that we just talked about. All right, so. Whether you are starting a new team or wanting to improve the one that you have, like I prefaced at the very beginning, focus on one thing at a time, right? Maybe one of these things we're missing from your team or as you're beginning to want to have a team, right? Create that list. Come back to this PowerPoint. Focus on one thing at a time and do not overwhelm yourselves. All right, guys. Well, that is it for my presentation. I am so glad I got us done with a little bit of extra time to spare. Um, 
And I want to kind of open it up. We do have time for those who would like to say who have any questions. Um, I would, I'm obviously available for you. Did we have any questions come through chat? We weren't able to answer at this time. We had Beth who had asked about the workbook that you were referencing. And I just wanted to kind of um, give you an opportunity to address. I'm pretty sure that you're sending it out afterwards with the recording, right? Um, yes, yeah, so I will, we will do a follow-up email, which Chris and I will get with you on, and I will include these direct links as well. But if you scan this uh, QR code right here as well, and I will include actually the actual Dropbox link, Dropbox link um, this workbook will be in there. It will be a PDF. You also have a PowerPoint and an Excel spreadsheet. Wonderful. So much more efficient. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, in case anyone had any other questions, I'd be more than happy to answer. Okay, Chad, how can we get teammates motivated in a slow market in a rural area? That is a big one. So Chad, I would assume in this question or in this specific scenario, it is just a really low production. Is that, and if you are able to speak up or text or ch chat back if you want to, uh, a slow market in a rural area and keeping team members motivated. Yeah, basically uh, my main question is, we're not, I mean, we're 25 minutes east of Denver out okay. here. Okay. And um, we're highly saturated with other agents, obviously trying, you know, over the past two years, I've been trying to get some of the agents to join the company and stuff like that. But we just created a team in February and it's all family or whatnot, but we only have like one, our broker is basically the only one really getting clients and stuff like that. Like, you know, and me and my other partner or me and the other teammate, we're basically over here trying to get motivated, but we're lacking in it because there's not enough houses out here for everybody to get a lot like I mean I'm driving two hours to get houses sold like I go I work down in Pueblo as well so oh wow okay okay <laughs> yeah so you're all over the place just yeah it's yeah. So a funny motivator you would say is kind of now with this broker now with your team how many are on your team right now you said is there's it just you? yeah there's just the three of us yeah just the three of you together and it's when we say broker is that over your entire brokerage or just of your team itself Basically, like yeah, we're we're a small Remax out here, and it's just the okay. three of us. We're all family too, so it's me, my sister in law, oh. and then my mom. Yeah, so it's a little muddier with the family. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and like I mean, I'm I'm trying to get my sister in law basically motivated to get out there to do stuff. You know, outside. I mean, we've got Real Grader on board, we've got Google local ads, we've got everything going, but we're just not seeing the volume that we have in the past. Um, just because like I said, like everybody, there's an oversaturation of everybody that knows agents or that yeah. is an agent out here. Yeah, that is tough. Chad, this is a whole conversation. Would you mind actually popping your email for me and or sending it directly to me if you're more comfortable? I would love to actually have this conversation, send some resources and insight if you'd be okay with that off yeah. um, training. Cause yeah, this, I, I really love that. And especially it's helpful that you are in this area. I've known people who exactly, they are driving two hours north, two hours south, up and down, works, tried to work Zillow leads. I have seen that. So um, shoot me your email. I would love to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation around that and really, really dig in with you. Um, okay. There's a thousand questions I'd want to ask to preface Yeah. Um, some of that, but I, I would love to have that conversation with you. Perfect. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, okay, thank you so much. I did get that, Chad. And um, Erica, no, so this is um, a Momentum Complete Agent Development, and it is the Master Team Builder Boot Camp. However, like I said, so it's like a full two and a half hour um, workshop. So I a little bit made it a little more when we say essentials of an overview. So the workbook will dive a lot more in for you guys. And then I obviously, I love doing presentations. So a lot of these, I just put my own aesthetic and twist onto it. So it may look different. However, it is still that same information um, through that Momentum boot camp, Erica. All right, awesome. Does anyone have any other questions for me? Top of mind, um, again, I will post um, to everyone my email again for you guys in case you have any questions or you wanna reach out or um, I know for some people, maybe you're more comfortable reaching out in a more private um, 
you know, setting. So feel free, take my email down, utilize me. Um, I also have an entire team surrounding me who are just amazing assets here at Remax University. Um, of course, you have your amazing regional development team here as well. Well, Braden, on behalf of the entire West team uh, in regional development and everybody on this call, thank you so much. You were very, very um, good at your presentation, very confident, and just gave us so much knowledge. And we really appreciate you and thank you for your time. Of course. I'm so happy to be here and I can't wait to see you guys again, hopefully soon in the future.